Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me is my physically ill co-host, Colin Mitchell, still recovering from COVID. Uh, Colin, are, are you feeling okay? Do you we're, have doing, your senses? we're doing all right. You know, I didn't lose taste. I didn't lose smell. I just couldn't breathe for a little while, but we're all right. Is that it? That's it? You just couldn't that's, breathe? That's pretty much it. Oh, that, that's that's not bad. That's not bad. You know, that's what happens when you go out partying every every day, Colin. I've been telling you, you need to partying slow down. Partying every day. I've been telling um, you, you need to slow down. Just getting my 20s out of the way, you know? <laughs> Living it up in your 20s? There yeah. You um. Well, we have we didn't do a podcast after the Texas Southern win. Okay. So this is going to be our, I guess... Not really a reaction because we watched some of the game, but it, it was it is what Let it me, is. I'm gonna be honest. I watched like two touchdowns within like two minutes, <laughs> and I was just like, "All right, I'm too sick to watch this game," so I just stopped. <laughs> yeah, I was. I think I had, uh, I think LSU played at the same time as as Texas as uh, North Texas last time, so I tried clicking in whenever I could. But um, yeah, so if y'all want to recap of the game, this this is not the place for that. But then again, that game was five days ago. So I don't think y'all are looking for that. We will talk a lot about UNLV though. And that, yeah. this UNLV game is actually interesting. And I didn't think it would be coming into the season, but here we are coming into this week. It's going to be very interesting, interesting game. However, I want to start this podcast Colin with, did you know it is the four year anniversary of the Arkansas game and the fake punt punt return? Wow. Is that is that supposed to be some omen? It, it, it's it's I don't know if it's an omen. I just I think it's something we have to recognize and we have to say our oh, okay thank yous to we gotta have like a moment of silence or a something. moment of silence for the 2018 <laughs> team. <laughs> Bro, what a moment that was, dude! I I will never forget that game when we drove up there, and then I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to get in with my my, my credentials. Yeah. Then we drove back the same night and it was we were both like dead tired. Went yeah. to that Chili's that was disgusting. <laughs> shout out chilies man bro i just remember finally getting up to the press box as the national anthem was playing and being drenched in sweat from head yeah, to toe because we walked sweat. like two miles because i had to we had to walk there and then you got in and then i had to walk around and then walk back and oh it was just absolute chaos and i was drenched in sweat but anyways great moment shout out to keegan brewer um and that whole group mason fine and yeah all right we can talk about this year's team now Colin, uh, I want to start with this. Here's here's how we'll start this podcast. Coming into the season, when we did our our um, schedule predictions, you know how this team would finish in the year and everything, we had some games that we knew they were going to be underdogs in, and some mm-hmm. games that we presumed them to win comfortably. Um, UTEP, we thought would be kind of tough, but we had them winning it. SMU, we thought would be a loss. Texas Southern, easy win. UNLV, easy win. Memphis, tough tough uh probably a lost tough game but now before we can even get to memphis and the rest of conference i'm over here looking at this unlv game and north texas is a field goal underdog to unlv yeah and i i i did all of my research beforehand you know this is this is my job i've before the season i went through i had all the one through 131 rankings up every team in the country uh, ranked um, before the year, and D- North Texas, and this is according to the on three one. So every CBS had one. All the all the ranking sites had one. Right. This is on three. Had North Texas at ninety one. Okay, seems pretty reasonable. I think. I think somewhere in that ninety to hundred range is pretty safe for North Texas. I mean, that's that'd be pretty good for them. I think. Uh, coming off the past couple years of disappointment, then you have to scroll all the way down to UNLV. And UNLV comes in 117th. Last year Ooh. they went two and ten. And there, there is just no expectation coming into the year that this game would give North Texas any real trouble. Or at least no more trouble than UTEP, you know, than like some yeah, other yeah, conference yeah. games. Right. But here we are, and North Texas is an underdog. And now we have to consider the possibility of North Texas losing this game which would throw a major wrench in our seven and five predictions per potentially in bowl predictions and their likelihood of making a bowl game. If they can't beat UNLV, because if you can't be UNLV, who can you beat? However, UNLV is be getting inflated uh, from their performance against Cal, which I actually watched last night. I watched like 80% of it. 
I know you have nothing better to do on a Wednesday night. No, I don't. Okay, I watched UNLV Cal, and I I don't think UNLV is very good. Okay, but with all that being said, I, I want you to talk because I just talked for like two minutes straight. So you, what do you, th- what was your thought when you saw North Texas was an underdog? And are you scared? Yes, I'm scared, and I've been scared since they put up 55 uh, early in the season. Yeah, to Idaho State, Cal. Cal yeah, I mean they're not that great, but Cal mm-hmm. um, obviously also did it. But I think the biggest thing for me, and although you know a lot of it's garbage time, 27 points given up against Texas Southern. Um, that's still concerning to me. You can put up the 59 points scored, you know, have the defense on the field more than the offense. Basically, it seemed like at least whatever. You can't be giving up 27 points to Texas Southern, one of the worst teams in their conference. And I don't care how it comes. That just can't happen because that means that you're just going to give up a lot of points to a team that can actually score. Yeah. So I think that's my main concern. That's the thing is that we we talked about this before. We didn't do a podcast, but we t- we were texting about it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, okay, let's let's do some pickums, right? We didn't even tweet these out. We're just awful, um, awful, podcasters. awful podcast hosts. Awful. So, anyways, we're like, all right, point total for Texas Southern. I threw out thirteen and a half initially, and or fourteen and a half, one of the two. And I was like, okay. And then I go and do some more research on Texas Southern, and they're predicted coming last in the swack. Yeah. last in the last swag. in the swag. that kind of rhymes honestly last in the swag all right and keep last in mind in um uh, lsu played southern who is was pred- predicted to come in second in the swag so i know what good swag teams look like compared good to swag, swag teams. teams i know the full <laughs> range of swag teams okay don't don't question my swag knowledge here but basically southern didn't score a touchdown on lsu and i'm not comparing north Texas to lsu but regardless for Texas Southern to put up the points that they did, and I know one was off of like a tip pass or whatever, but they still yeah, were yeah. moving down the, down the field pretty effectively at times. Yeah. I I was concerned from that. Um, so I think that, that speaks to part of your concern. I think that speaks to why some of the books and why the odds makers dropped them a little bit. You dropped North Texas for that performance while UNLV is over here fighting with Cal and losing by six. Well, I'm also wondering too right. how – because like you said, the difference in, in how good the teams were predicted to be preseason, how the how it swung so much in the UNLV's favor. Obviously, you know, North Texas a couple of years ago, however many years ago it was, they played Cal, it was close, I think. Pretty sure it was yeah, close. it was. But I don't think they got any of this praise. So what did you see during that UNLV game versus Cal that made made uh, made made maybe made some books or odds keepers go uh, to pause? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a quick recap of the UNLV. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quick recap. Um, UNLV's quarterback is athletic. Their running back is big. Uh, they they move the ball somewhat well early. But then Cal, on the other hand, I texted you this. They got inside the 15 on five of their first six drives. Yeah. Um, And they were just moving down the field consistently, consistently throughout the entire first half. And then as the second half progressed, UNLV actually started getting stops. And Cal, um, I don't know what happened. I don't think Cal's very good at all. But anyway, they started getting stops, and that's where the scoring just stopped for both ends. And it, it was like a ping pong game for the rest of the, uh, for like the last quarter and a half, where they just kept punting and then you know going back and forth to like the others forty, the others are like midfield, and then punting and so on and so forth. So it was a pretty ugly watch in the second half. I don't think either team is good. I've said that before. Um, I think UNLB's. UNLV is being a little overinflated at this point. However, them being overinflated doesn't mean that North Texas is going to run away with this game or they should right. be favored even. Like, right. North Texas, the UTEP win did them wonders. Imagine if the season started out with just the <laughs> the SMU and Texas Southern games. That would have been – Like, sad. imagine where our heads would be right now. We'd be like, yeah. they're going to lose. So, Or, on the other hand, if they lost UTEP. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i mean I, yeah i didn't want to say it but yeah imagine if that would happen so with that being said my my overall takeaway from watching the unlv cal game is i think these two teams are on a very very similar level mm-hmm. and the difference is this game is in las vegas and can seth luttrell this always comes back to seth luttrell right can Seth Luttrell get his team up for what is now a big game 
on the road before conference play starts. Yeah. I don't know. Coming off of a blowout loss to SMU and a blowout win to Texas Southern, like I don't know if he'll he can have his team ready. As much as I want to believe it, there is a five years, six years of evidence saying that they just some a lot of times can't get up for games when they're the underdogs. So UTEP was obviously a, a step in the right direction. Last year's UTSA performance was a step in the right direction, but I think SMU kind of showed us it's like when you're playing a team that's better than you, and I'm not saying you know he's better, but you know if, when you're playing a team of the same quality, if not better, North Texas struggles at times to get up. For sure. There. And and also to go over a few of um, UNLV's last few games, obviously they played Idaho State, won that game 52-21. We already talked about Cal 2014. Um, last year also, uh, the second to last game of the season, they only lost by eight to number 19 San Diego State. So... Like this team is able to, you know, they're, they're resilient, and I don't think if, if North Texas comes out and they're not ready to play like they kind of weren't against Texas Southern, where they were, you know, I mean, you and I both texted each other and we're like, "What is the score right now?" Whenever it was like, I think one touchdown. Uh, yeah, in the first it? quarter it was close, and then second, second. Yeah, the second, uh, sec- yeah, the second. Yeah, the second. Just... The first quarter and then the second quarter. Yeah, and they just went yeah. and they did their thing, but that first quarter. They should have came out hotter than that. I think if they come out that same way, you know, UNLV might capitalize on it, especially like you already said, they have a mobile athletic quarterback. North Texas in the past has had a lot of trouble with those. And we're not really sure still about this defense. So, yeah, right. We were after the UTEP game, we were ready to keep a lot of praise on them. And then the SMU and then Texas Southern just scored on them and moved the ball with relative. Move the ball teams. for sure. Yeah. So I'm. I'm hesitant at this point. I don't I don't fully know what we're going to get from this defense. And I think to beat this UNLV team, you have to contain that quarterback. I mean, for those – like, again, I watched the game. This quarterback was giving Cal some fits. And Cal is not a great Pac-12 team, but they are talented nonetheless. And still a so, Pac-12 team. Yeah, they are a Pac-12 team. So, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from this game. I, I think having it as UNLV favored might actually be – either right or it might should be a pick them or something like I'm, I'm on the fence with this one. So I, I think our reaction to this will be much more interesting because if North Texas goes out and wins by two touchdowns, I think we're, 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 we're okay with that. Right. We're feeling better uh, going into, it. I think if they win at all, I think that this would, this would be considered a, like them playing like a, and I don't know the conference as well as I used to, but like a, Maybe UTEP again, honestly. Or, or like, yeah, or uh, like a, a FAU. Not even, I think maybe, maybe they might be better than La Tech, but yeah, maybe like an FAU. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, so it's almost like a gauge, you know. This will, I think this will give us a better gauge, um, more so than UTEP, just because UTEP's the first game of the season. Who knows how both teams are coming out? Then you go to SMU and Texas Southern are hard to read, anyways. So, yeah. I think this will be a good tell on whether or not we're going to be excited or less excited coming conference time i i literally just couldn't believe when when i first saw the line i was like wait north texas is an underdog to unlv because for this whole season i've just been like all right we have the texas southern week and then the unlv week and then they get memphis yeah that's what i've been this whole season is like all right you have the smu game then you have two weeks of like whatever and we don't have to worry about watching them i mean we'll we'll watch them but you know and then memphis and fau as those two weeks where we'll be like okay well it turns out you're going to have UNLV first and then get into those two. So really you're starting the season and yeah, the UTEP win is great, but then like SMU, your, your underdogs, UNLV underdogs, Memphis underdogs, FAU underdogs. Like that's yeah. Yeah. four out of five games. And, and what was that stat last year? You probably don't remember off the top of your head, but Seth doesn't have a good, uh, against a the good spread. track record against the spread. Yeah. Let me see Seth's record again. Um, let's see if I still have it here. Uh, is this updated? Um, I don't Probably think this not. is updated. But basically from the Liberty game in 2018 to through last year, they were – Seth was 14, 26, and 1 against the spread. Yeah. Yeah. And so, that includes and that includes a six-game cover streak last year where they actually, you know, where they were 1-6. One, one so the yeah. books, like, completely killed them. And then they covered against Liberty even though they lost by 11. And then, you know – beat southern miss beat utep beat fiu beat utsa so yeah 
not great numbers against the spread. So that's that's a not not the most enticing. And I doubt they they didn't cover against Texas Southern, didn't cover against SMU. Um, I don't remember the UTEP spread at all. Uh, let me see I don't know why I can't remember that, but it feels whatever. But they didn't cover their their last two games. I know that much. It so. was a uh, UTEP spread was new and one favored by one. Oh yeah, it was close. Okay, so they covered that. So there you go. They're one and two on the season. So make of that what you will. I'm hesitant. Do you want to get to our predictions and our over unders? Yeah, let's 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 go for it. All right. Uh, for those we didn't tweet these out or anything. These are all in our text messages. <laughs> but last week to recap. We had the over-under at Texas Southern at nine and a half. That's how little we thought of Texas Southern. I said over. Colin said under. I was right. It was the over. We had over-under three and a half turnovers for Texas Southern. Colin said under. I said over. Colin was right on that one. They only had one, and it was a fumble. Didn't force an interception. Not great. Uh, And then Grant Gannell, over-under 99.5 yards. We both said over. I thought for sure this dude was going to play a lot. He attempted four passes, had 40 yards, and one pick. So we're both wrong. So Colin is still in the lead. We all we actually didn't give game game predictions in this text messages. We kind of just moved on with our lives. But anyways, Colin's in the lead, eight and seven, eight to seven. Let's Huge. Go to MLB. What do you have one, or you want me to go first? Uh, I we text them to each other. You should For have UNLV. Yeah. Okay, read them off then. I don't remember this. I'm going to drink my Capri maybe, Sun. Maybe. You know, you, you can buy Capri Suns. <laughs> I bought a 10-pack of this. I am going to drink my Capri Sun. I bought a 10-pack of this for $3. Can you believe that? I didn't hear what you said, but I was looking for this, and I thought we said it, but we didn't. We no, just we talked didn't. about UNLV. Okay. We uh, I'll go first. No, I, I can go. I can go. I can go. Okay. Let's go. Ooh. Over under 31 and a half points for UNLV. Oh god. I'm gonna say under. I'm gonna say under. I'm I'm, say I'm pretty confident too. that they they both teams average 33. Under. Okay. I'll you say under? under? I'll go under. Okay, both say under. All right. Rush yards allowed by North Texas. Over under 150. UNLV had 105, I think, against Cal. But their running back is pretty good. I'm going to go under. Okay, I'm going over. You're going over? Yeah. Oh, my. I don't trust this run defense um, as much as I think a lot of people do, uh, really, at all. Uh, Cal un- or Cal- Colin under. Uh, we both said over 30- 31.5 for Cal or for UNLV. Yes, I didn't think about their quarterback, but yeah, I'll still go under. Oh yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't really think about that either. To keep it interesting. Uh, okay. Let's see here. We can get one more, maybe two more, and then we go predictions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Okay, Austin Ani picks over under one and a half. Uh, I want to say under, but the part of me thinks, part of me just thinks he's going to be forcing the ball at times. But I'm you know, he's over. gotten better. I'm he's gotten better over. this year. He's gotten better he this year. He has looked better, but he's also only played Texas I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him the benefit. I'm going to say under. All right, I'm going to go over. Dude, if he throws two picks, good lord. Okay, um, my last one is going to be. Katie Davis tackles over under nine and a half. I don't even know what he averages on the season. I don't know either. You just matter. you just threw that out there. Yep. We got uh, over under nine and a half. Yep. Over. I don't like that one. Why don't you like it? I just don't like it. You think it's too easy? I I mean I think he's gonna get a lot of tackles. Anyways. I have one more because we got to. Uh, I feel like we gotta do this every week. Over okay. under 0.5 picks for North Texas. <laughs> Let's see. I just watched the whole UNLV game. I should be able to assess this pretty quickly. I'm going to say under. I don't trust North Texas to get picks. I think they're going to get one. I think, I think, I think they're going to get one. Okay. All right. Game predictions. Here we go, Colin. Let's see it. <sighs> you, you, you go first. All right. 
I have already placed my bets legally here in Louisiana. <laughs> um, I'm rolling with the Mean Green, North okay. Texas. P- put it down. Bet it on the money line. All of you will all be rich. I believe that this team is this the hammer is more talented. The hammer. I should go get it. The, uh, this team is more talented than UNLV. They, albeit, have some holes defensively. I think Phil Bennett will get them right. I think they just overlooked Texas Southern, which I don't fully blame them. But I think they'll make enough plays. Even though I just in the in the uh, pick them, I just had UNLV rushing all over them and them not forcing interception. I think the defense will get enough stops, and I think Oscar Attaway in this run game will come through, and Austin Ani will not throw two interceptions. And that's all you need. That's all you need. North Texas walks out of here with a convincing thirty-one to twenty-three win. Thirty-one to twenty-three. Held them the three field goals. Ben, don't break. Don't break. Man, this is so hard for me. I'm going to go 30 to 27 UNLV. <laughs> I got to see it to believe it. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I understand that. I understand that. All right. Well, there you have it. There are picks. We'll see how the game goes. We'll be back with the reaction podcast sometime this weekend, Sunday or Monday. Um, and we'll see. If they lose this game, though, Colin, I know I, I over this, this is this is one of the seven. If I over exaggerate anything on this podcast, I want to over exaggerate the importance of every game. And this game in particular is the biggest game of the season. What to this point? To this oh, point. okay. I was like well heck. It might be more important than the Memphis game because, like, well, I don't we have said, we said UTEP was the most important. Yeah, well, this one is bigger. This is okay. bigger. What if they lost against UTEP? Is it bigger? Yes. Okay. This is this is big because right. you can't lose to UNLV. We didn't even mention they have like four players on this team from Las Vegas, uh, including a Kaika Ragsdale and uh, I think Fahey. I think there's going to be like some bad blood. They really want to go to UNLV. I, I think I think they're playing for their home state. They got some mm. got a couple of Las Vegas people out there. They got good connections with the, the the coaches at the high schools and stuff. They're going to put on a show. North Texas wins this game. Uh, big game. Don't lose to UNLV, Seth. Please do not lose to UNLV, Seth. Please. I'm definitely probably looking way too far into SMU and Texas Southern, but hey, you know, COVID brain. That's all blame it on. <laughs> No, that those are aberrations, Colin. Brain aberrations. fog. Brain fog. Brain fog. Long COVID. <laughs> Long COVID. <laughs> All right. For Capri Sun, for Colin Mitchell, I'm Matthew Bruni. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe, like, um, follow us on Facebook right there and Spotify over there. Look at that. That was that was instant. You didn't even have to flip um, your hands follow around. Follow our tw- Twitters right there and over there, wherever Colin is. Uh, we appreciate y'all for joining us, and we'll talk to you.